Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. We're continuing writing our space shooter game using the libgdx library. And last time we worked on collision detection so that these lasers would uh, stop when they hit these other ships. And when we did that, we noticed that we had a lot of duplicate information. So let me head over to the ship class here. And we had these floats that represented the lower left-hand corner of the ship and the width and height of it. And then we had to make this bounding box rectangle. Now we needed that because, let me scroll down a little, we wanted to be able to find out when did the ship intersect with the rectangle that represented the laser. So this is not very efficient because we need to continuously update this information every time the ship moves. So essentially we're storing the position and the width and height in two different places. So we're going to work right now on simplifying our code a little bit so that moving forward we don't have so much to update when we have um, changes to the ship. So let's uh, start right here in the ship class. Remember this class is abstract because the player ship and enemy ship classes each um, implement some important methods differently. So the ship class is abstract as a result. So first of all we're going to remove these fields here entirely and you're going to get a bunch of red on your screen because there are a whole bunch of places that those are used. Then we're going to scroll down and work on uh, finding those spots. So first of all the X position was determined from the center which was passed in as a parameter right here and subtracting the width divided by 2. This is the lower left corner of the ship and so I'm going to just cut that bit and put it in place of X position where we built our bounding box. Same with the Y position. Cut that and put it right there. And width and height are still there from the parameters to the constructor. We don't need any of those lines now. And all of that is now stored in a single uh, object, this rectangle object, which we're going to need anyway. That's why we're making this change. The update method was to update the bounding box. That's not necessary at all anymore since um, we're going to update it directly when we move the ship around. Let's scroll down to the draw method at the bottom. It used the X position y position, the width, and the height. Those are all stored in the bounding box now. So let's just delete that. And instead we're going to replace it with the x position and so on from the bounding box. So I'll type bounding box dot x. That's how we access the x value. You could also use the get x variable, but there's no need. We can just use it directly. Bounding box dot y. Then we'll use the width and height. Bounding box dot width and bounding box dot height. So it's exactly the same thing, it's just stored inside of an object. And drawing the shield is the same thing, so I'll just copy that stuff and replace those four parameters there. So once again, the only essential change is that we've removed those additional unnecessary variables and we've instead got this bounding box variable which will hold all of that information. Okay, now this is going to have some effect on how the player ship and so on is done. You're going to see some red on this screen as well. And the only place it really changes is inside the method where we make the lasers, the fire laser method, because it was using the X position before. So now what we'll do is change this to bounding box dot X, just like we did in the last method. Bounding box dot X and the width will be bounding box dot width. Over here, just scroll over to the Y part. The Y position will be bounding box dot Y, and the height will be bounding box dot height. Okay, same thing down here. I'm just going to copy and paste this stuff right up to the end of width here. And for the Y part, bounding box, the Y position, and the height. And there we go. So the player ship class is now fixed. Let's move on to the enemy ship class. A couple more things to do here. So we have the same idea, X position, X position plus the width. Maybe I'll zip back to my player class and grab the bounding box X, bounding box width. That's the same kind of code there and there. The Y one is a little different because the lasers come from the bottom so it's just bounding box dot Y. We don't have to do the height thing. And bounding box dot Y there. 
Okay, now you'll notice there should be two more red errors here. That's because the enemy ship had its own draw method that was an, that was an override from the original draw method. Let's go back and look at the draw method in the ship class. So this part is still the same, so I'll copy that. But remember, we did this because the enemy ship's shield was a little bit different. It was in a different spot. So the beginning is fine, bounding box dot x. The y position, bounding box dot y. But then we subtracted the height of the ship times 0.2, 20% of the height of the ship. So that's going to be bounding box dot height. And then last we have width and height. Again, I guess I'll copy and paste that. So just a small change there. So this highlights how when you override methods and just sort of rewrite them, when you make a change like this, you have to remember to go to all of the different subclasses like the enemy ship and make those same changes. As much as possible, you try to do everything you can in the original parent class, in the ship class here, that is the parent of the enemy ship. Okay, let's head over to game screen and let's see. Oh, you know what? Actually, we have one more thing to do. Let's go to laser. The laser, we had been creating a rectangle every time we wanted to get its bounding box. And this is when we noticed how terrible this implementation was. So the laser, very much like the ship, we can replace all of this stuff with uh, a rectangle to represent that. So I'm going to go to the ship class, zip up to the top here. This line of code is going to become the new position and dimension for our laser. Lots of red happened just like before. So this is where we're now going to make that bounding box like we did in the ship class. We get to copy and paste this stuff. The bounding box is going to be from the center. And there we go. Now one change here was that the Y position that was passed in is not the center, it was the bottom. And so that's better, I think. I'll have to double check that afterwards, make sure things look correct. The draw method, once again, is going to need the same kind of change. I'll steal that from the ship class as well. X, Y with height. And now the get bounding box, we actually don't really need this method since um, we're inside of the same class. We could probably get away without that, uh, but we could just return bounding box. I'm just going to go double check and see if we really need that, or um, where where we implement or sorry where we used that method. Let's go and see if I could just replace it with the bounding box directly. Uh, that would have been uh, when we were looking for intersections. Yeah, so we had playership.intersectslaser.getBoundingBox. Let's just try bounding box. Yeah, we can access that directly, so we don't really need that method. Let's delete it. I think I'll just comment it out, just in case I made a mistake. And we go back and find the places where it was used. Um, I think that might be it, actually. Yeah, player lasers and enemy lasers. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's just see what else we have here. Ah, the laser dot y position was being used when we were um, moving it. So for now, what we're going to do is just make a, a small change here to make it bounding box dot y, and here as well. Uh, in the future, we're going to change this even a little bit more, but for now, this is what we're going to do. I think in our next episode, we'll be making this change. And then laser.height is going to be bounding box dot height. Whew, okay. Well, let's give it a quick run and see if I've made any boo-boos. I especially want to check to see if lasers are starting and ending in the right places. Okay, so the lasers, I'm not certain they're coming out of the right spot from the enemy ship. So we're going to take a look at that. They look pretty good for the, and you know, maybe a little bit low for the player ship as well. So I think the lasers are starting out in the wrong spot. Let's go and see what we did there. Okay, so I found my mistake, and it's that the lasers bounding box, the y bottom divided by height over 2, I think should just be y bottom. 
because um, that's the value that was passed in and that's going to be the bottom left corner of the laser. So let's try that. There, that looks better. Okay, so that is the big change. We've simplified our code by using a rectangle object instead of using four separate field variables. The reason for that, once again, is because we want to be able to test for intersections, and that requires us to be using a rectangle. Uh, next time we're going to start working on keyboard input, how to detect keystrokes and then move the ships based on what the user is doing. Okay, thanks very much. I'll talk to you soon.